Section 5.1 deals with exponents, and this is a topic that should be review for most of you, but I am going to go through all the basics. So we'll start with the definition of exponents. So if you have an expression like this one, x times x times x times x a certain number of times, let's say we do this n times, we can write this as x to the n power. And that's actually how we say that. We can say x to the n power. And sometimes we'll just say x to the n for short. Others might say x to the nth power. And so all of these are correct. Another thing I want to point out in this expression here is that x is what we call the base, and n is called the exponent, or sometimes called the power. So we'll just work on a few really basic examples to make sure that we understand the basic concept of an exponent. So take the first example here. We would read this as x to the fourth power or x to the 4, and it means, quite simply, x times x times x times x. Notice that what we have here are four factors of x. The next one, x plus 5, quantity to the third power, means x plus 5 times x plus 5 times x plus 5. So we're just repeating the base, which in this case is x plus 5, three times. And these are all multiplied together. And later on in this chapter, we will actually learn how to multiply this out. But for now, we'll just leave it like this. The last two examples here are to point out an important difference when using parentheses versus not using parentheses. And so for this one, we have negative 3 quantity to the second power, which means negative 3 times negative 3, which is positive 9. And for the last one here, we have negative 3 to the second power. So notice that we do not have parentheses around the whole negative 3 here. That means this exponent of 2 only applies to the 3 and not the negative sign. So the negative is still there, but then 3 squared is just 3 times 3, and this is negative 9. And so, as usual, and especially with exponents, parentheses really matter. Let's look at some rules of exponents now. So here are our basic rules of exponents, and they all have names. So the first one says, if you have the same base, x here, then x to the m power times x to the n power is x to the m plus n power. And this is called the product rule for exponents. The next one is the quotient rule, which is very similar to the product rule except that now we are dividing x to the m power by x to the n power. And when you divide, you subtract the exponents. And you take the top power minus the bottom power. Next, we have the power rule. So if you have an exponential expression such as x to the m power, and you raise that to the n power, we multiply the powers m times n. The next one is is a really basic rule. It's the zero exponent rule. And it basically says that anything raised to the zero power is always equal to one. And this is only true if x is not zero. So in other words, zero to the zero is not one. Zero to the zero is undefined. But anything else raised to the zero power equals one. And this is not intuitive. So that's why it's considered a rule. Then we have the power of a product. 
So if I have the product x times y, quantity to the n power, basically you apply that power to both the x and the y. And then the power of a quotient, it's the same thing here. If you have a quotient raised to a power, that power applies to the top and the bottom. And finally, we have several definitions or rules for our negative exponents. First and foremost, anything raised to a negative power can be thought of as the reciprocal of the same base to the positive power. And that's equivalent to if you have a fraction raised to a negative power. That's the same as reciprocating the fraction and changing the power to a positive. And lastly, if you have a negative power in the top and the bottom of a fraction, you can reciprocate the whole thing. So the negative power on top goes to the bottom, and the negative power in the bottom goes to the top. And when you move those, the powers become positive. We'll do some examples of all these next. So looking at our first example, number one here, this is an example of the product rule. Since the base is the same here, x to the 5 times x to the 3 will be x to the 5 plus 3, which is x to the 8th power. Our second example is an example of the quotient rule. Notice again we have a common base of x here. And since we have that common base, we can subtract the powers. And x to the 10 minus 3 is x to the 7. Next up, we have an example of the power rule. And so if you have an exponential expression raised to a power, we can multiply these powers together. And so this becomes x to the 3 times 4, which is x to the 12. Number 4, we have the quantity 5x all raised to the 0 power. And there's actually two different ways to do this one, but the easiest way is just to say it's equal to 1, because once again, anything to the 0 power is 1. And we would make the assumption here here that x is not 0, because if x is 0, then you have 0 to the 0, and that's undefined. For number 5, x times y quantity to the third is the same as x to the third times y to the third. This is an example of our power of a product rule. Number 6 is similar. We have the power of a quotient. So here's a quotient being raised to the second power. And the rule says you take the top and you raise it to the second power, and you take the bottom and you raise it to the second power. And then, of course, we can do one more step here because we know that 3 to the second power means 3 times 3, which is 9. Number 7, we have a negative exponent. x to the negative 5, by definition, is 1 divided by x to the positive 5. And finally, number 8, we have a fraction raised to the negative 2 power. That's an example like this one here. And what we can do first is we can flip the fraction, 5 over x, and then make the power positive. But now we have a power of a quotient, like this problem here. So now we can say raise the top to the second power, raise the bottom to the second power, and then finally we know that 5 squared is 25. So these are all basic examples of the rules of exponents. In our next example set, we're going to look at more complicated problems. So make sure you understand all of these before moving on. All right, so in our more complicated example set, the directions are to simplify. And in problem number one here, we have a over b to the third quantity to the fourth power. And so first and foremost, we have a quotient to a power. So we're going to raise the top to that power. And then the bottom is b cubed, and that also gets raised to the fourth power.
Now, after doing that, you can see we have a power to a power, and the way we simplify that is we multiply those powers. So our final answer here is a to the fourth over b to the twelfth. And one final comment is that you cannot subtract these powers because the bases are not the same. In example two, we have a very similar example to number one, just a little bit more complicated. We have a fraction to a power, so we're going to start by taking the top of that fraction, raising it to the second power, and the bottom of the fraction, also raised to the second power. And then we have the product raised to a power, so the second power now applies to the 5 and also to the t to the 8th. And in the bottom, it applies to the 3 and the m cubed. And when we do that, we get 5 squared times t to the 8th squared over 3 squared times m to the 3rd squared. And our last step here is we can go ahead and do the math. 5 squared means 5 times 5, so that's 25 3 squared means 3 times 3, which is 9. And t to the 8th quantity squared will turn into t to the 16, because we have to do 8 times 2. And m to the 3rd quantity squared will turn into m to the 6th for the same reason. So our final answer here is 25 t to the 16 over 9 m to the 6th. And that's as far as we can take it. Now our next example brings in some negatives. Negatives always make problems a little bit more difficult. So first and foremost, I'm going to use the basic definition of a negative exponent, which says that when you have something raised to a negative power, that's the same as 1 over the same thing raised to a positive power. So the only thing I changed is the negative 5 became a positive 5. But whatever was inside the parentheses stayed exactly the same. Now what I need to do is I need to remind myself that negative t squared is really the same as negative 1 times t squared. And so when we have that raised to the fifth power, we can think of that as 1 over negative 1 times t squared to the fifth power. And then that fifth power will apply to the negative 1 and also the t squared. So this becomes 1 over negative 1 to the fifth power times t squared to the fifth power. And this is 1 over, now let's think about this, what is negative 1 to the fifth power? Well, negative 1 to the fifth power is negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1, and that is negative 1. Right? When you multiply five negatives, you get a negative. And so that's negative 1, and then t to the second power, quantity to the fifth power, is t to the 2 times 5, which is t to the 10. And so our final answer here is 1 over negative t to the 10. We could write our answer like that. Or we can make that answer a little bit cleaner by saying negative 1 over t to the 10. So this is definitely the best answer. So it's really interesting if you think about it because there's not a lot going on in this problem. But there are a lot of steps to fully understanding everything to do there. Okay, so our next example here, number four, we have negative 9x squared multiplied by x to the fourth, excuse me, x to the third, quantity to the fourth. So like most things in mathematics, we want to do the parentheses first. So this is negative 9x squared multiplied by x to the 3 times 4, which is 12. And then finally, what we have here is a common base, 
in multiplication so we can add those exponents together. And so this becomes negative 9 times x to the 2 plus 12, which is negative 9x to the 14. Okay, our next example is a bit more complicated. So notice here in this problem, we have a large fraction that has negative powers on the inside and also a negative power on the outside. And if you try to deal with all these negative powers at the same time, it's going to be pretty confusing. So let me show you what I think is the best way to do it, but this is certainly not the only way to do it. So what I'm going to do is start by rewriting just the factors that have a negative power on the inside of the parentheses. I'm gonna rewrite that by moving these to either the top or the bottom and making the power positive. So if we just do that step, everything else stays the same so that we still have the negative two power on the outside. We still have the four on top, the three in the bottom, we still have the B on top and the A in the bottom, but then A to the negative two on top drops to the bottom and becomes A to the positive two. And I'll do that in a different color just to highlight it. And B to the negative three in the bottom moves to the top and becomes B to the positive three. And let's keep in mind that this is multiplication here. And let's also keep in mind that when a variable doesn't show an exponent, the exponent is automatically equal to one. So now this is equal to, on the inside, we're going to add these powers together because we have a common base and one plus three is four. So that will be b to the fourth power. And in the denominator, same deal. We're going to add these powers together. That's going to be a to the third power. So now I've completely simplified the inside. So now we can say when you have a fraction raised to a negative power, we can flip the entire fraction. So we're going to put 3a cubed on top, 4b to the fourth in the bottom, and the power here becomes a positive 2. And once the negatives are all gone, now you can just apply the properties that we applied in the previous problems. So we're going to raise everything to the second power. So I'm applying the second power to everything on top. And when we complete that, our final answer here will be 9a to the 6 over 16b to the 8. Okay, and our last problem here, we have negative 3 times x to the 0 times t to the negative 2. And so to do this problem, first and foremost, let's remember that x to the 0 equals 1. So this is negative 3 times x to the 0 is 1. And then t to the negative 2 is 1 over t squared. Now, also keep in mind that negative 3 is the same as negative 3 over 1. 1 is also 1 over 1. And now we can simply multiply these fractions together. Negative 3 times 1 times 1 is negative 3. And 1 times 1 times t squared is t squared. And one thing that I forgot to mention, but I have been consistent with in all these examples, is you don't want to leave a negative exponent in your answer. So that's why when you see something like t to the negative 2, you need to take its reciprocal to make the exponent positive. Let's look at just a few more here. Now these examples are relatively simple, but sometimes simple problems can be a little bit confusing. So our first one here, we have negative x to the negative 1. And so I want to point out once again that when you have a negative sign in front of something, remember that that's actually a negative 1 times x to the negative 1. And so we can think of this as negative 1 times 
and then x to the negative 1 is 1 over x, and this is simply negative 1 over x. Sometimes what students will do is they will uh, take these two negatives and they'll make a positive out of, it or, out of it or something like that. So you have to be careful not to do things that are not allowed. The next one is very similar. So we have 4x to the negative 4. This is 4 times x to the negative 4, which is 4 times 1 over x to the 4. And keep in mind that 4 is 4 over 1. And so if we multiply straight across, we get 4 over x to the 4. And one final example here. Um, again, we've got multiple negatives. Um, don't let that worry you too much. Take care of the negative powers first. So we can take care of these negative powers by moving them to the, either the top or the bottom. And so if we do this, we get a negative and then p to the negative 6 becomes p to the positive 6 on top. 8 stays where it is, and x to the negative 5 drops to the bottom and becomes x to the positive 5. And this is actually an acceptable answer, but you can also put that negative on the numerator. And so I want you to understand that both of these are the same. I tend to prefer this answer, but they're both correct. Okay, time to get some practice.